Every morning, every evening, ain't we got fun? Not much money, oh, but honey, ain't we got fun? The rent's unpaid, dear, we haven't a buzz. But smiles were made, dear, for people like us. In the winter, El Kid. in the summer, I still don't get it. Don't it's like that El Cid place down in L.A., only it's El Kid. Ah, okay, I see. There's nothing surer. The rich get rich and the poor get children. In the meantime, in between time, ain't we got fun? I don't care. Uh, Trixie? Yeah? You know what you'd sing great? This one song by... Pick it up with the piano player. He does the set list. Break a leg out there. Thanks. Hey. Back off, kid. I'm trying to entertain some people here. Uh, Trixie? Yeah? You know what you'd sing great? This one song by... Pick it up with the piano player. He does the set list. Break a leg out there. Thanks. What's all this? These are my pamphlets, laying out in scientific detail the horrors visited upon those who succumb to the temptations of alcohol. Lost Fortnite? I am particularly fond of that one. It tells the true life tale of Johnny, who woke up in a pile of his own sick, completely unable to remember the previous two weeks of his life. Heavy. Actually, the pamphlets are quite light, see? Edna! What? You know, Trixie Trotter sings a song that sounds a lot like your You Should Care. She does? Yeah, but hers is a little more carefree. That's what you get when you sing for booze hounds and gangsters. How's that song going over? Oh, if only I could convince a few of these night owls to stop and listen. Would you like to hear it? Uh, sure. 
You say you've lost your self-respect, but you should care. It's not too late to redirect and start to care. Don't despise the good and pure. Time to rise up from the sewer. Wash off all that foul manure. Show the world you care. You should care. You should care. What people think of you. Of goals that you could name, reclaiming your good name is what you ought to do. You should care, you should care. If your reputation is in disrepair, it's not going to hurt you to reclaim your virtue, for you should care. Catchy. I got a hot lead for you. Oh? What is it? Young scientist strands dog on courthouse roof. What? Look over there. Oh, for goodness sake. Mr. Brown. Please, Miss Strickland, not now. Can't you see I've got a rather delicate situation on my hands at the moment? My trial run... Trial run? Public hazard, I call it. And I'm sure my editor will agree. This scientific enterprise of yours represents a clear and present danger to public safety. You know what represents a clear and present danger to public safety? Your singing voice. There's no need to get personal, Mr. Brown. Believe me, I have no intention of getting personal with you. I'm relieved to hear it. Flying cars of all the ridiculous juvenile notions. You mock notions. me, but just imagine. A world in which traffic jams and car crashes are a thing of the past. I might be more inclined to listen to you if your maiden voyage hadn't ended in a crash on one roof and a stranded dog on another. I'm working on getting him down. <gasps> Heine, how'd you get down? Clever dog. Well, fortune favors you tonight, but I warn you to be more careful in the future. Now... How to get that rocket car back down. Hey boy, take a whiff of this. You gotta love that nose. I've been laying low, officer, but I've gotta go to the pictures once in a while. Hello, Arthur. Officer? I'll take it from here. But, but... We can talk of the Majestic, away from prying eyes. Yeah, Einstein, you done good.
Emmett. No, no, no time for chit-chat. I've got a rocket car to recover. Emmett! You get down from there before you hurt yourself! Hurt myself? <laughs> You're far too cautious, Miss Strickland. Hey, Doc, I could use a little help. What's the problem? Doc, Parker's in worse shape than we thought. We've screwed up his life so bad he's been dumped by Jennifer's future grandmother. Ah, I know. Marty, it's more important than ever that you get Officer Parker back on his destined path. If Jennifer never exists, then I'll never take you to 2015 to save your kids. Then old Biffle never... Paradox City, got it. Should we be worried about your younger self and Ender Strickland? That is a peculiar wrinkle in the space-time continuum, but I'm sure nothing will come of it. I can't possibly imagine myself becoming attached to a woman like that. Is Artie still here? He's in the bathroom. Hey, Artie, open up. You've got a gangster to bring down. Is it time for me to meet this Sylvia? No, it's time for you to meet Trixie. Trixie says she's got something that might be able to send Kid up the river, but that you're the only one she trusts to check it out. Me? What is she? Oh, I know what she's done. Clever. Care to let us in on the secret? Sorry, guys, but if Trixie's keeping it a secret, then so am I. That's all well and good, Mr. McFly, but if you and Trixie are going to collaborate on this evidence, we'll need to arrange a rendezvous. Well, Trixie's chained to Kid's speakeasy. So we'll have to bring Arthur to Trixie. Uh-uh. No way am I getting anywhere near that place again. I don't know how you talked me into this. Just stay back here in the shadows and don't come out until you see Trixie. You're sure I'll be safe here? Perfectly safe. We'd never make you take any unnecessary- <gasps> Sagan. Where's Kid? Don't worry. Welcome back, sir. What's it gonna take to get Trixie to squeal on Kid? Uh, Trixie? Yeah? You know what you'd sing great? This one song by- Take it up with the piano player. He does the set list. Guess who's waiting in the alley to talk with you? Huddy? The one and only. It wasn't easy to track him down. I had Come to- Come up for me, cue ball. I'm taking a smoke break. Had a girl. Hey, you! Huh? Yeah, jerk. I saw you making eyes at my Eunice. Sorry, pal. I don't have time for a fight. Why, you- I'll never get to Carnegie Hall at this rate. All right, fella, I think you're done for the night. Hey, where do you think you're going? Me? Yeah, you. What do you know about this? Uh, nothing, I... Ah! Trixie? Break silver cue ball. Whatever you say, babe. What was that? Uh, Trixie? Yeah?
What happened in the alley with Arthur? I don't want to talk about it. You know what you'd sing great? This one song by... Take it up with the piano player. He does the set list. Break a leg out there. Thanks. Party? <laughs> you missed a hell of a party, buddy. Kid, well, what happened? Oh, you're gonna love this. So, I'm hanging out in the club when all of a sudden I get an urge to drain the lizard, right? I come out into the alley, and who do I see? None other than that scrawny, subpoena-answering rat, Artie McFly. And get this! The little worms whisper in a way I'll conquistadorial like with my Trixie! Oh, no. Naturally, I pull out Kid Jr. and prepare to put a couple bullets in McFly's head. Which causes Artie's nose to stop bleeding because he's a big wuss. And then... <laughs> and then... <laughs> what? Trixie literally gets down on the knees and begs me to let him live! <laughs> huh? Seriously, down on the knees crying and begging for McFly's life! So, uh, what did you do? What could I do? I fired two shots in the air and told Artie to take a hike. Huh, that was merciful. Hey, I got plenty of mercy. Besides, now Trixie owes me big time. And Kid Tannen always collects on his debts. Always. Welcome back, sir. Looks like Parker's still parked. You in? Why not? Put it all on red. Two. <sighs> The shrew didn't burrow deep enough. Uh, Trixie? Yeah? 
about Artie McFly. What about him? Have you heard from him? Is he okay? Oh, yeah, he, he's okay. Are you sure? Believe me, if he wasn't okay, I'd be the first to know. I talked to Kid. Oh? He told me about Artie. Oh. It was awesome of you to plead for his life. And it was uh, awesome of Kid to spare it. So you see why I gotta get rid of all the dirt I got on Kid. As long as he's loyal to me, I gotta stay loyal to him. Okay, so Kid spared Artie's life, but that doesn't make him a saint. Believe me, no one knows that better than me. But if Kid can let Artie off the hook, I guess I can let him off the hook. Know what I mean? Break a leg out there. Thanks. Hey, what? So about this, uh, portrait gallery of yours. What about it? What's it all about? Who are those guys? <clears throat> the caricatures hanging along the Wall of Honor commemorate those who are no longer with us on account of having ticked off one Irving Kid Tannen. They're the guys the kids killed? Well, of course not. They're just a bunch of guys that Kid didn't particularly like and that at a later date turned up dead. It's a, a what do you call it, a, a circumstantial coincidence. Yeah. Think you could do a caricature of me? Sure. Presto! That really doesn't look like me. I didn't have much to work with. Do you know what happened to Trixie out there? She seems pretty freaked out. You talk weird, you know that? But no, I don't know nothing about Trixie's emotional state. Kid doesn't pay me nearly enough to pour drinks and babysit his crazy girlfriends. Talk to you later. Hey, look! A paying customer! You think you could draw a picture of this guy? Sure. Hey, that looks like that Artie McFly think. Hmm, I never noticed that before. Hey, uh, can you give him a hat like Artie wears? Voila! Nice job. Now, go tell them chumps at the New Yorker. Checkerboard Charlie, removed from the board. I guess someone jumped him. Sorry about this, Dad.
Uh, Trixie? Yeah? I don't know how to tell you this, but I think you should check out the Wall of Fame. Why? What is it? Adi! I don't believe it! We had a deal! Adi was supposed to be... safe! I don't know what to say. Well, I do. Felony tax evasion. What? Before he died, Adi was teaching me about all sorts of stuff. Literature, history, accounting. And I made a big discovery while I was copying all of kids' books. This establishment ain't entirely on the up and up. Really? Oh, I knew about all the gangster stuff. That kind of thing you expect from tough guys like Hid. But when I found out he ain't been paying taxes on his speakeasy profits, well, cheating Uncle Sam is one step over the line. Once I turn this over to the police, they'll throw the book at him. This book? Hey, copper! He's not interested. Figures. Half the police force is in Tannen's pocket. Give me a few minutes to work on him. I've got a hunch he'll come around. Boss? Do you mind? I'm trying to have a good time here. I think you'll want to see this. Are you crazy? Bringing a stick of dynamite into my club? That's just it, boss. It's all over the place. I think our speakeasy arsonist is getting ready to strike again. <laughs> 